So let's pick up exactly where we left off last class period. We were talking about teaching measurements to primary students, and I want to do some specifics with the problem that we did here. We talked about um, making them do things step by step. We talked about um, making them follow through with the steps and so forth. We want to go to yards. And we also talked about making sure that you teach the abbreviations before you use them and as you're using them, etc. So we're talking about how important it is to teach students to do things step by step, teaching them how to organize their material, making them be consistent in how they do their work. Um, following instructions and being able to do a step-by-step -step problem. So now what I, where we left off and what I want to start with today is what are those steps? What would be the steps that we would teach a third grader who has no idea how to convert these? I mean, this is so simple. You're going to do that on the top, off the top of your head, right? Um, so how do you, what are the steps? Because remember, good steps have to work all the time, don't they? And they have to be easy to remember. And they have to always be done in the same sequence. So, um, and not only that, we said don't use the abbreviations until you've taught them, right? So we do have to teach the abbreviations. How about we abbreviate that? So don't use the abbreviations until you've taught them. And then the next thing would be, with this conversion, what you want to do is require them, show them the steps, teach them the steps, and then make them use the steps. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you the steps, and then we will teach them the steps. We'll do that by reciting them. We'll do that by asking the students over and over again, what are the three steps? And then asking them individually, so-and-so, what's the first step? And make them verbalize what the step is and then do the step. So then we're going to teach the steps. So we're going to not use the abbreviations until we've taught them and we're going to then teach the steps. We're going to be doing that by recitation, which of course is drill by in the drill time and then we're going to be individually constantly asking questions. What is teaching? It's confirming for joint possession. So I'm going to ask so-and-so, what's the first step? Okay, what do we do next? I'm constantly going to be getting feedback from them and asking them, what's the first step? Or what are the three steps? So I'm going to teach the steps and then I'm going to use the steps. and I'm going to make them show the steps. So teach the steps, use the steps, require them to show the steps. Students don't like to show their work, especially the easy problems. Now this, may, this is not going to be that easy for a third grader, but later on you still have to still require them. So you're going to teach them, drill time, and in class interaction, then you'll use the steps every time you do the problem. Every time you do the problem, you use the steps, and you use them in the same order, and you use the same wording. This is primary math. So what are we doing? We are teaching from scratch. So part of the idea of teaching from scratch is using the same steps every time you do the problem, and using the same wording as close as you can, which is something that I have trouble with, because I don't have to worry about my wording in ninth grade, do I? Sometimes in seventh grade I do, but in primary you have to pay attention. You can't call a step one thing one day and then call it something else the other day or reword it, especially for primary. Now third graders should be a lot better than first graders. So the first step that we are going to do here is, in, in this kind of, um, at third grade is kind of at a lower level, the first thing that we're going to do is decide what to do. So the, then, so what you have to do is you have to give them the steps and then use the steps. So that means you have to actually teach them what you want them to write.
This is primary. I don't do this in high school, though sometimes I do. If it's something new, there are certain steps that I require them to write. For example, when we're doing a story problem, I make them write let x equal. And I make them write then, T-H-E-N, x plus 2 equals. I do make them, I don't, I'm not saying you never do that in high school, but keep in mind I'm teaching Algebra 1, okay? And so I require more things. I'm teaching, especially if I'm teaching story problems from scratch, I do, this, I do the same thing. It's just at a different level. When you're teaching someone to do things step by step, you have to many times teach them what you want them to write. What are they supposed to write? When it's a new concept and you're at a lower level, whether I'm at the lowest level of algebra in seventh grade, and even the lowest level of high school algebra in Algebra 1, I wouldn't do it in Algebra 2. In Algebra 2, I'm grading for the answer. In Algebra 1, I'm teaching them how to do algebra. Okay? Mr. Kelso always teaches Algebra 2. I've always taught Algebra 1, and him and I teach totally different. I teach more steps. I make them write more things. I make them show more work. It's the same thing here. So even though I have never, I told you, I've never taught third grade, I have never done this. But the principle is the same. It's a teaching principle. At a lower level, two things you got to realize here. It's not in my notes, but just think about it. Let's apply this. At a lower level, what do you have to do? You teach more procedure than you do concepts. Okay? Now, this is primary math. This is third grade. This is teaching how to do a measurement problem. Later on, we'll be trying to catch the concept up. So this is, I'm showing you a procedural driven lesson, or I'm teaching them how to solve a measurement problem, how to convert. I am not explaining to them what's really going on, am I? I'm just teaching them procedure. And this sometimes is what you have to do at lower, especially third grade, fourth grade. And then later on, I'm, we're going to be catching up. All right, so this is an entirely different way to teach measurements compared to what I did a few days ago in intermediate math, where we are going to start forcing the students to do the cancellation of units, forcing them to be able to do multi-conversions and so forth. And there, that's where I have to come back and get the concept down better. Here, I am showing you how to teach a procedure in a step-by-step -step format, and sometimes this is how we will begin at the very beginning to teach them how to do a problem, even though they don't really understand the fact that 21 feet will be seven yards. <laughs> I want to show that to them, and I want to come back to it. I'm not saying you to ignore it, but this is how you teach straightforward procedure. You are going to teach the steps and make them memorize them, right? And then you're going to keep asking them questions, trying to get them to apply them at the right time. And then when you do the problem, when you're teaching it the first time, you are showing them exactly what they're supposed to write. And you do it the same way every time. It's a new concept. So teachers got to do it the same way. Don't write it one way one day and write it another way the next day. Okay. And as a primary teacher, you have to be a lot more aware of that than I do. Okay? Then you require them to show their work. And they have to show their work every time they have to write what you want them to write. And you have to teach them to what you want them to write and then enforce it. It's frustrating if they don't know what they if they don't know what you expect them to do. So I'm showing them, I'm using the steps so that they know what they're supposed to do. And then when they don't do it, they get the penalty. They shouldn't get it if they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide what to do. Am I going smaller to larger multiply? Remember, it's a crutch. Because what are we doing? We're teaching them to do a problem with, by procedure, not by concept. 
So larger to smaller multiply, or is this smaller to larger divide? Which one is it? So the first thing I have to do is decide what to do. So we talk about it. Which unit is larger? Brooke, which unit is larger? The yards. The yards. So what am I doing? I'm going smaller to larger. So the first thing I do is I decide I'm going smaller, right, to larger. What do I do? Divide. So the first step that you write down is what you're going to do. Because I'm going smaller to larger, I have to divide. So step one, what am I going to do? I'm going to divide. Why am I going to divide? I'm going smaller to larger, divide, right? And I do my best to present it in the same way, especially the first several times, and use the same wording, and I write the same things. I may not write smaller to larger. I'm not a primary teacher. I just used abbreviations, didn't I? But third graders should be able to catch on to that. And if they don't, then I would write the whole word. But the first step. Then the second step. Here's the, this part is not me at all. What's the special number? I don't want to say that. <laughs> it just drives me nuts because it's not a special number. It's the conversion fact. But what's the special number that relates yards to feet? Three, so. And then if you're in a Becca, they teach them to circle the number. It's the special number. All right, now, a little addendum here. Don't change the procedure in your textbook. Why? You confuse them. Don't, but I do have an addendum on that addendum. Don't change the procedure in your textbook unless there's a very, very good reason to do so. So there, are there times that I change procedures in textbooks? I do it a, a lot because I have enough experience of my own that I know what works and what doesn't work. Um, in Algebra 1, this is my 32nd time to teach that class. So I do my own thing, okay? I, do use the, I don't hardly use the textbook except for problems. And then I, I write all over the textbooks, cross stuff out. There's one phrase in the algebra book that says not to complete the square and not to worry about can they complete the square. I was like, what in the world? You have to complete the square to be able to graph the parabola. Why are they saying that? Cross it out. Okay. I haven't gone to the point where I went through all the student texts and crossed it out, but I thought about it. But primary, do you want to do that? No, you want what you're teaching in class to line up what they see on their work page. So I don't like this, but it is third grade. And it is in the Abeka book, okay? I have the measurement problems right here. Oh, the, they have a little S, a special number. Okay, and here they have it, okay? I got this from somebody who was not a good tearer outer of their book. It's kind of funny when they have to do their own tearing out, you can see who's careful and who's not careful. This must have been boys, right? So, but see, they have the one, two, three all written out. They have the steps up here. Decide whether you should multiply or divide. Decide how many. This is called the special number. So I'm going to follow the textbook unless I have a really good reason not to because I don't want to be doing things on a primary level, especially even lower, first and second. I want to keep in line with the textbook. And if the textbook is that bad, get rid of it or whatever, or just use the problems out of it and don't refer to it, but don't change it. So I'm going to divide by my special number. And then step three, I have to do the division. 21 divided by three is seven. And that's a math fact. And then 
Step four is to put the number in the answer blank. Can anybody tell me why I don't like this? Well, it leaves out what? That drives me nuts with my seventh graders. It leaves out the units. It plops them on the end up here in the answer blank and then forever and a day I have seventh graders who never label their answer because they just think of it as a label, as an afterthought. It's not a label, it's not an afterthought. It's not a fill in the blank, it's the answer is three yards. Okay, so then when I taught fifth grade math, they were still kind of using these, I adjusted them for the fifth graders. Okay, because if I was teaching third grade math, I would not adjust it because it's new and they're younger. Okay, but I did still make them decide what they were going to do. But guess what I made them write instead of this special number? I made them write three feet equals one yard. Okay, and then I made them write. Now, I didn't make them put the unit inside here because that's the computation, but I made them write it here. And so many times they'd forget it, forget it, forget it, but I kept saying, units, 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 units. Because I've battled for decades now, older students not using the units properly in their formulas, and then just throwing them on the end half the time and half not. Okay, so teaching the measurement problems is a step-by-step more memorized type wrote at the beginning. But then we do have to transition out of it. And I still dislike the fact that we're not using the units, but I guess we can allow for it because it's third grade. But we have to start stressing the units. And um, when we're teaching something that is step by step, be careful, don't use things they don't know. Um, and when I teach the steps, I do, when I'm in primary especially, or if I'm doing something brand new or multi-step, I do memorize and drill steps. I do constantly ask them, so-and-so, okay, what's the next step? And they have to tell me with a step and then do it on the problem. So-and-so, what am I going to do next? And they give me the next step. What am I going to write? Tell me what to write. And then we get them up to the board. And when they're on the blackboard, do you let them just do it off the top of their head? come up and just put the seven in because some of them can do that they kind of i don't know i haven't been around third graders um I, I do teach second grade sunday school so i'm around the second graders and um there's a lot of the, several of the kids in there that could do that problem without doing the work but we make them do the work um what did we avoid here What did I avoid here? It came out even because third graders have to be taught how to express the remainder as a fraction. And so we'd have to make some type of concession for it. Either let them put R, whatever, or avoid it altogether until they are in fifth grade and they can do the remainder as a fraction. All right. so. Converting at the primary level is procedural driven. I'm going to teach, then memorize the steps. I'm going to constantly be using them in drill. I'm going to use them in teaching because there's always going to be a teaching progression. Teacher show, teacher do, teacher work through, and then what do we do? We go to the blackboard. Okay, so we're teaching step by step. We're going to teach the steps, and that includes recitation and memorization. We're going to constantly get feedback and ask the students, what do I do next? What's the first steps? What's the, what's the first step? What are the three steps? Then I'm going to use the steps. I'm going to teach them and show them exactly what they're supposed to do, what they're supposed to write, and then we're going to require them to show their work and do those steps. All right, but then as I'm teaching, I am going to always, when I'm teaching a new concept, I'm going to have everyone's attention, 
probably make them sit up and fold their hands. Third graders? Yep. I've thought about doing it in seventh grade. <laughs> Haven't. But get their attention. I don't have the seventh graders fold their hands, but I don't have, let them have their book open when I want their full attention. Otherwise, they're already looking to see what the problems are and how many problems there are in the homework and not listening to me at all. So get their attention, show them from the very beginning, spelling everything out. Then I should do another problem, shouldn't I? Right? I should do the next problem. And guess what? I'm going to write exactly what I did the first time and I'm going to try to say the same words and I'm going to definitely write exactly what I want them to write. So let's do another problem and I'm going to choose my problem carefully. I'm not going to do something that doesn't come out even. I'm not going to do something that they don't know the times table for. They know they're sevens, right? So I can use 21 and 3. Am I going to do miles to feet? 5,280. What would be another good one to do next? You tell me. Easy numbers, familiar units. Feet to inches has 12. Cups to I was thinking gallons to quarts. Fours, they know four. Cups to pints, two is kind of too easy. Maybe not, I don't know. I was thinking gallons to quarts, except for this time, I am going to go multiply. So I'm going to do five gallons equals how many quarts? And if I've taught the abbreviation, I'm going to use the abbreviations. I'm working on not putting the period anymore. Have I put a period yet today? No. I'm trying not to. Okay, so what do I do here? I'm going to ask somebody for the three steps. I'm not you guys, but I would ask a student, okay, I have to convert five gallons to quarts. And I'm going to say, what are the three steps? And then I might even ask, what's going to be the special number? Okay? And then I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to do it first. I'm going to say, okay, the first thing I have to do is decide what I'm going to do. Let's decide. And I'm doing it all the work myself. I showed them a brand new problem, and now I'm going to do another problem, and they're not really going to have to contribute a whole lot. So I'm going to go through. What am I doing? Class, do it with me. Ready? Come on, guys. Larger to smaller, multiply. All right. So I'm going to multiply. I write that in my first step. I decided what I'm going to do because I'm going larger to smaller, multiply. I don't know if I like using the cadence, but if it helps, maybe. All right. What do I do next? Well, the next thing I have to do, notice I'm doing all the work answering my own questions because this is the second problem they've seen in their whole life. I'm going to write my special number. Now, I have been drilling the measurement facts, and they should know the special number, so I'm going to make them contribute here. What's the special number, Amanda? What is the special number that I need between gallons and quarts? Four. So I'm going to write it right here. And I'm going to circle it. Now, the Abeka workbook actually has it written like this. Um, and they have the whole thing written out. They do not have the abbreviations. Because abbreviations do have to be drilled and learned. But they have written, if they had that problem, it would say five gallons. And then below it, they don't even have an equal sign. They have blank quartz. This, I, this is not in that book. And then they have this on the page. See how they're already helping the students with the steps. Okay. So um, they're not even using the equal sign. So what I want to do is, if it looks like this on their page, what should I do? 
make it look like that on my page. Okay, and they even have this, no kidding. I sometimes i am critical of Becca because it's a little too easy. But at the same time, I will say this, Becca is very good at instilling basics. Bob Jones is better at making them think. So balance. And um, we are working to convert, okay, because you need to be able to think, not be able to do a recitation and write steps out, <laughs> okay? But there has to be a balance. So that doesn't mean that I expect them to do all the thinking in third grade, okay? All right, so I have larger to smaller multiply. My special number is four, so I'm going to multiply five times four. What is that, class? Very good. All right, so what am I doing? I introduced the problem. Didn't I? Now I am doing a second problem. Sometimes if it's a more familiar concept, I might skip this. What am I going to do next? So this is kind of teacher do. Then I'm going to do a third problem with the students telling me what to write and what the steps are. I did, I told all the steps, I did everything except for the multiplication there, didn't I? Then by the third problem, sometimes the second, but by the third problem, the students tell me what to do. I'm still gonna physically write what they tell me to do, but so I've got teacher do, and I'm gonna say, teacher guide because they're going to be telling me the steps I'm going to be doing it I'm going to be corrected and then student practice I might do two of these but I'm always going to do teacher do teacher guide student practice okay then on the next thing the fourth problem Who's writing? Students writing. Probably I'm going to set the problem up and one by one someone's going to come up and write this. Someone's going to come up and write the special number. Someone's going to come up and do the problem. Someone else is going to come up and put the problem in the blank. Okay. So it always progresses from teacher introduce, teacher do, teacher guide, student practice, okay? Because by here, by the fourth problems, the students are gonna be writing, and then we're going to be really just practicing extra. Practice, practice, practice. Math is a skill that must be practiced, okay? Then in third grade, We're going to do the same thing with measurement equations. Measurement equations. And by measurement equations, we will pretty much be able to do a lot of the multiplication, but we have to still be careful. Uh, here's a measurement equation. Five yards. It seems like Becca is pretty consistent with um, pretty consistent with writing out the unit. By the way, if I'm teaching third grade, I am using cursive, right? 
you don't want to see my print. If I use cursive, I can at least keep it straight. So here's a measurement equation. 5 yards minus 12 feet equals blank yards. Okay? So here we have to have steps as well. And here we're actually going to also be telling them exactly what to write. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is decide what are we looking for. Step one, decide what are we looking for. Look at our problem and what are we looking for? Yards. So the first thing I do is what are we looking for? We are looking for yards. So what we do then is we bring down all of the same unit. We bring down five yards. Can we bring down the feet? No, we can't. Then the next thing that we do is we Oops, not yard. Sorry, got to write it out. Yard. Circle the two units that are box the two that are different. So what this problem has I have to do first is I have to convert feet to yards. So I'm going to use my three steps. To convert feet to yards, what am I going to do? My three steps. What's my first step? Decide whether to multiply or divide. What am I doing here? I'm going smaller to larger divide. So I write my divide down. Okay, what's my special number? Yards to feet. What's the special number? Three. I'm going to use three. So, 12, let's get that over, 12 divided by 3 equals 4. So I'm going to put 4 up in the blank. Okay, so what are we looking for? We're looking for yards. Bring down all the yards, right? Yards all the way across. Then look, box the two that are different. Then we have three easy steps to convert our yards, our feet to yards. Now we're ready to, now we're ready to subtract. What is five yards minus four yards? It's one yard. The S gives it away, doesn't it? Okay. But then we can use this to teach the fact that can we add yards to feet? I mean, can we subtract feet from yards? No. We have to do 5 yards minus 4 yards equals 1 yard. I'm already reinforcing in my own mind why I do not want to teach third grade. Okay, but do you see how to teach something that is brand new. You're, you have to, you have to make sure that when you teach that, what do you do? You teach the steps. So that means you're going to use them for recitation. You're going to be constantly getting student communication back. What's the first step? What are the three steps? Then you are going to teach them exactly what you want them to write. You're going to use Teacher do problems, then progress to teacher guide problems, then work your way all the way down to student practice and eventually student independence, right? And also make sure that you teach them exactly what you want them to write. Make sure that you don't change the procedure that the textbook uses unless there's a really, really good reason to do so. So when you are teaching, Measurement problems. Last thing. Conclusion. Tips. Summary. In conclusion, what are some things 
that you need to remember when you are teaching measurements to primary students. Number one, measurement conversions are a brand new procedure. Okay, so this is a brand new procedure. So that means there's a lot of teaching involved. All right. We gave you at the very beginning of last semester the seven steps, right? Terminology. So what do you have to do about terminology? So remember, we are teaching a brand new concept, so we have to proceed with caution. Terminology. How does that apply to what we're talking about? What do we have to make sure that they know before we start using them? That would be, it's on there, but not right away. First thing we have to know, we have to know what the units are, right? That's terminology. We have to know what the units are and their relationship between each other. We have to know terminology. So the first thing we have to know is what the units are and what the names mean and their relationships. We have to know the terminology. Yards versus feet versus inches, gallons versus quarts versus pints versus cups, pounds versus um, ounces or whatever we're doing. Then number two in terminology is the abbreviations. Measurement the U.S. customary measurements involves a lot of abbreviation, doesn't it? So we have to, that's terminology. We have to know that we can write feet as F-T. We don't have to write the whole word. So terminology, make sure they know the units and their abbreviations. Number two, this is brand new. So I'm going to make, I'm going to think through these things, facts. Obviously, what facts are involved? The special numbers. Okay, we have to know our basic conversion facts. They have to be memorized. And remember, we're dealing with conversion facts. Um, and they're actually conversion factors. And we want them to be automatic and immediate. Okay? so that we're not dealing with the idea of three. We're not struggling to remember the three in this problem. Okay, then concept. What did I say? We are going to be very procedural driven. We're going to skip ahead to the procedure and we're going to come back to the concept. We're going to bring the concept in, but we are stressing the procedure. So how do you teach a new procedure? So remember that in primary, measurement conversions are a new procedure. Okay? So in light of the fact that it is a new procedure, some ideas underneath this. First of all, teaching new procedures requires specific steps. Okay? Doesn't it? And what are you going to do with your specific steps? You're going to, I don't know, however you want to subdivide this, you're going to use the textbook. You're going to teach the steps initially. So, what do you bring to class? Do you want to be writing everything on the blackboard in your nice, neat penmanship? Visual! Bring a visual with the steps. So, this is a new procedure. So we have to show the steps. We have to teach the steps. So we're going to stick to what the textbook 
shows, unless we have a very good reason not to. We are going to teach the steps with the use of visual aids, with the use of drill time and memorization, and we're going to be constantly asking questions. Repeat, repeat, repeat. I'm going to say the steps a bazillion times. Then I'm going to question them and make them say the steps a bazillion times. All right, so new procedure. We are going to teach steps. Next, we are going to follow our own steps. Same steps, same formats. So I'm going to teach the steps using both drill time and visual aids and questionings, re repetition, repetition, repetition. Repetition is the key to learning, right? It's at least the key to memorization. Then I'm going to um, follow the steps. I'm going to use the same steps and the same format. Then I'm going to enforce the steps. How do I do that? They show it every time they do it on the board, every time they do it on their paper. So I'm going to teach steps. Then I'm going to progress through the problem. Right? Teacher do, teacher guide, student practice. Another way we could put this is teach through, talk through, work through. Teach through, that would be introduction. Talk through, that's me doing it again the second time. And then work through. Okay, I erased it already. That first problem where I introduced it is when I teach through it. Then I repeat myself with a second problem and I talk through it. Then I work through it, first with students coming up and writing individual steps, and my ultimate goal is independence. The students are up at the board and I'm monitoring them. Okay? So I'm going to show the steps. I'm going to actually teach the steps. I'm going to progress through the problems. Then I'm going to choose appropriate problems. Choose appropriate problems. That means at first, the numbers involved are easy, well within their times tables. In fact, you want to start below their level, you know, 5 minus 4, <laughs> because I'm teaching the measurements, not the math. So I want to make sure that the numbers are easy, well below their level. And also, I want to use familiar units. Okay, so choose appropriate problems. The numbers are easy. They're below their level, well within their multiplication table range. I'm going to use familiar units. And last, I'm going to avoid division that does not come out even at first. Because then I'm going to go to the next, the fourth step. I'm going to introduce variations. I have to progress from the simplicity of what we just did, but I'm going to introduce variations in class, on the blackboard. It shouldn't just show up in their homework. Didn't you hate it in your math classes where different variations just showed up on your homework and wasn't gone over in class? Then you look at the examples, and of course the examples are all too easy and you're stuck with what am I going to do with this problem? It doesn't come out even, or it's a different, it's an odd measurement or whatever. So choose or introduce variations. It shouldn't just be plopped at them. This is <coughs> primary math. It shouldn't, they just shouldn't be in the problem and you shouldn't expect them to figure it out. They're in third grade and this is a new concept. Okay. Later on, save that, save that for us high school teachers. Okay but not on a new concept. Okay.
teaching primary measurements. In looking back on it real quick, it is a new procedure. And it's going to be a lot more procedural driven than your other concepts. Remember our theme, we are teaching from scratch. So I'm teaching measurement from scratch and I am relying a little more than I like to on the rote procedure. That means I have to go back and catch up and come back to the concept later.